Ever since Sonic Lost World was announced, the Daily Six have been front and center as a big new enemy. And with the release of the newest trailer, we finally have a better idea what fighting them will be like. But there's a lot more hidden here than you would initially think. So you know what that means, it's time to fire up the whole analysis machine and see what secrets it might be hiding. And to do so, we've again enlisted the help of our resident Sonic expert, Derek Bidner. But do make sure to check out our previous analysis videos if you haven't already, as we'll be covering only the new stuff here. There are links to them all in the description below. And with that, let's get started. So the trailer gives us a small taste of each of the Daily Six's boss fights, starting with Zaz. Now we've already seen hints of his boss fight before, thanks to previous screens and trailers. But this is the first really good look we've gotten. This time, we once again see Zaz near Eggman's Eggmobile, and since he isn't attacking Eggman, he's likely still under the Doctor's control during this fight. And the battle itself seems to start soon after, as Zaz begins chasing Sonic with the robotic ball we've seen before. But now we can see that there's more to this fight than just a chase sequence if they stop to do battle. And it seems that ball will be Zaz's primary method of attack, as he throws it at Sonic and even has a cough up starve to crash land on the Hedgehog. But strangely, we can see that Sonic still jumps over Zaz even when he doesn't have the ball with him. This might suggest that he can't attack Zaz head on without taking damage from his horns, and instead have to attack him from behind. But more interesting is the fact that even though the battle starts off during the day, there's another portion that takes place at night in a different part of the level. Now we haven't heard anything about there being a day slash night cycle in Lost World, so what gives? Well, we have a couple ideas, one of which is pretty wild, so let's start with that one. Now, did you notice how Zaz's ball seems to vaguely resemble the sun? What if it actually absorbed all the light in the area, making it nighttime? Could this be what the glowing light inside his mouth represents? Yeah, it's outlandish, but remember, this is a game where a giant blue hedgehog battles monsters and an egg-shaped evil scientist. Of course, another and more conventional possibility is that he actually fights Zaz twice, and we're seeing two different boss fights spliced together. So either these are two different fights, perhaps in different levels, or one giant one. Now if all of these scenes are actually from the same battle, then we think the arena might just be one long circular loop that offers different arenas where the two will occasionally stop to fight. And this is supported by an earlier screenshot where we can see Sonic chasing Zaz in the same area where Zaz appeared to be chasing Sonic in the trailer, as evidenced by the three cone-shaped things here. But beyond that, if we look in the background, we can see one of the stars left behind by Zaz's ball, suggesting a battle took place there. And since this is in a different section than the area where they fought in the trailer, it does indeed look like they'll be stopping at multiple points. Alright, that's enough about Zaz, let's move on to Zomom, who's the boss of the desert ruins. And it seems like he may have a more persistent presence here than we would have initially thought. Take for example this scene where Zomom is stomping around near some blocks. But do those blocks look familiar to you? They should, since they're the same ones from the end of an early desert ruins level, being desert ruins too. However, when the scene shifts, those blocks are nowhere to be found. But we think we may have an answer as to why. A bit later in the trailer, we see Zomom dropping in. But rather than it being the usual desert area, it's the same wooded area from Desert Ruins too. And what's that he's standing on? Yep, they're the same blocks from the end of that same level. So what if Zomom first appears there when Sonic completes that level, destroys the platform made of blocks, and causes them both to fall to the desert area far below? It would explain why the blocks appear to be in such a wreck in that earlier scene. But Zomom isn't finished yet, as we see him spinning rapidly to form a sand tornado around him, though it's clear that his fists aren't hitting Sonic. There may be a reason for this though. In an earlier analysis, we pointed out a screenshot that shows Sonic running through a side-scrolling desert level while trying to stay ahead of a giant sand tornado. So could that actually be Zomom in the center? It sure seems like it could be, especially because the level details, such as the pyramids in the background or even the walkway, appear to match up perfectly with the Zomom scene. It would certainly be quite a bit different to have to spend an entire level avoiding the world's boss. Now another clip of the trailer reveals yet another confrontation with Zomom, except he's nowhere near the blocks and is instead surrounded by typical desert scenery. So we're guessing this comes at some point after the chase and is actually time to fight. And this one seems pretty conventional by overweight boss standards. As we can see, Zomom jumps high into the air and pounds the ground, which stuns Sonic if he doesn't jump in time. And it's no wonder, the dude's even holding a drumstick during the fight. Although this itself may be conventional, everything leading up to it does seem pretty unique, at least based on our theories. Moving on, Zick's boss battle seems kind of fruity, literally, as it seems he'll be making heavy use of all kinds of fruit during battle. But before we get to the battle itself, the trailer also reveals that he's actually known as Master Zick. But why? Is it just because he's the oldest, or is there something more to his character? Anyways, it looks like his boss fight is the first one to take place on the spherical world. But even more unusual is that he's chasing after Sonic while riding a giant piece of fruit, and later has a veritable fruit salad surrounding him. So it appears he'll primarily try to crush you with a giant fruit, but uses the smaller ones as a shield when he's on ground level. So far, this seems pretty simple but we think the challenge may come into play with a strange vortex behind him in another clip. What if he escapes into it after each hit in order to reach a new smaller planet? We do see at least two different sized planets in the trailer after all, and it would make dodging that giant fruit a little harder. The one thing we're not sure about is the balloon in the background of this scene. If we had to guess, which is kind of our thing, we'd say Sonic might be able to attack it to get even higher up in the air. Perhaps this will help him dodge Zick's attacks, or maybe it's the key as to how you get high enough to homing attack Zick while he's riding the giant fruit. Now there is one more odd thing about that balloon, and that is that it appears to be upside down with a knot at the top, almost as if it's actually tethered to something just off screen. Weird. 
After Zik, we have Xena, whose boss battle also takes place on a sphere, though this one is covered in ice. Like Zaz, she tries to attack Sonic with a giant metallic ball, though she's constantly swinging hers around thanks to the green laser. Now interestingly, while most of the battle scenes with her show a zoomed out view, there are a few that are right behind Sonic. Are these there just to show off his new skating and twirling animations? Or maybe it's to get a better vantage point on Xena? The only other attack we see Xena do is when she has no giant ball and instead sends out twin lasers that circle the sphere that they're both on. Maybe, like Zaz, you have to get rid of the metallic ball before you can attack her properly, and the lasers are her last line of defense. She has yet another similarity to Zaz, though. During one of her taunts, she's standing on the head of a snowman, the same one that she uses as a weapon later on. But the intriguing thing is that it's dark out unlike every other scene where she and Sonic are fighting. What's going on at the time of day here? Maybe it's possible that you fight her twice too? Next up is Zor, who as we stated in the past analysis, is standing on the mechanical owl that you have to avoid in a previously shown stage of Silent Forest. But this time we can see that the owl seems to launch missiles that Sonic will likely have to homing attack in order to reach Zor. But that's not the only interesting detail in this scene. Did you notice the background? It's quite a bit more detailed than the other bosses that we've seen so far, and that's because it looks remarkably similar to the level that you have to avoid the owl's gaze. We predicted before that the stage would lead right into Zor's fight, and this gives even more evidence of that fact. Zora's fight also provides more evidence that he made it to fight each member of the Daily Six twice, since in another scene he's in a completely different area. This one has a waterfall in the background of the collapsible set of platforms beneath Sonic and Zor. And right before the scene cuts away, the owl spotlights turn off, turning the area completely dark. How will this factor into the fight? And later on, we see a horde of one-eyed bats flying toward him. If we had to guess, the setting is where you'll fight Zora a second time. And finally, there's Zavik, who's proven to be just as mysterious as ever, since his boss fight also seems to take place in Windy Hill. Except his takes place on a sphere and has him riding a dragon robot. But the robot itself seems to be the primary target as Sonic homing attacks his tail in order to damage him. The scene then shifts entirely at that point as a dragon robot then shows up in a side-scrolling section. But this one's surrounded by clouds, unlike the wide open areas we've seen before in Windy Hill. But then the background changes yet again for the next portion of the boss fight, where the clouds are all black. Is this the same area, or could it be that lava region from the world map? Now this time, you're actually battling on the back of the dragon itself, as Sonic contends with the firing lasers while battling Zavik mano a mano, who by the way appears to have a charging and stomping attack. Could this be the final fight of the game, or is there still more after this? Okay, we're just about done here, but there's still one final thing I wanted to mention. Now we've already theorized in the order of the worlds before, but if the order of the bosses in this trailer is any indication, we may finally know for sure. Now we already knew Windy Hill and Desert Ruins are the first two worlds, and sure enough, Zaz and Zamalm appear in that same order. So since Zik is next up, that means Tropical Coast might be third, followed by Xena's Frozen Factory and Zora's Silent Forest, which of course leaves the Lava Region as the last one. Plus, has there ever been a time when the Lava World wasn't the final game world? And with that, we're done covering everything we could dig up on Sonic Lost World. And like always, let us know if we missed anything by posting in the comments. If you liked our analysis, please make sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at GameExplained. There are even super easy to click links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and make sure to keep an eye on GameExplained.com for more on Sonic Lost World and other things gaming too.